Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. I want to take a moment to mention how much I appreciate each and every one of my subscribers and your support for the channel because without you I wouldn't be doing this more than likely. And it takes hours and hours to put together all of this content and verify that it will work on your particular system. So with that in mind, let's discuss upgrading the operating system version on your Incas server. So in the last video, Upgrading Incas Container OS, I showed how to upgrade each and every one of your Incas containers from an older OS version to a newer OS version, and we used Ubuntu as an example. So Incas relies upon hardware virtualization, which needs to be supported and enabled on your server. And in this tutorial, I show how to upgrade the Ubuntu server OS version on your Incas server that we installed in the Incas containers step-by-step -step tutorial. So there are some issues that you need to be aware of when performing an upgrade on your Incas server operating system. And we're going to upgrade my production Incas server OS instance to Ubuntu 24.04 today. Okay, so here's Scott from the future. I almost didn't do this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. But I wanna jump in and say right up front so you guys don't attempt to do this, or if you do, it's buyer beware. Um, this is a uh, article here, that um, a response here on the Incas forum where Stefan Graber got back to me and mentioned that uh, a problem that I had reported was most likely due to the upgrade of ZFS on Ubuntu 24.04. In any event, just to give you a little bit of perspective, I've spent the last three days doing a video on upgrading my Incas server host from Ubuntu 22.04, which I recommended in Incas container step-by-step, to 23.10 and then on to 24.04. And so, frankly, the results were shocking and that's where this huge problem ended up coming from. It turns out that if you nest Docker inside of an Incas container and the Incas server is 24.04, uh, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So Canonical made some massive changes um, and, and that massive change, I think, involves some things with cgroups, but mainly a new version of ZFS and the way that ZFS did file mapping. And that really does matter when you have virtual containers. So despite the fact that the contents of a container are inside of a storage pool, and then the container itself is inside that storage pool, and that Docker is inside of it, when you go to 2404 on the server, all of your Docker images and thus containers end up vanishing as though they were never there. It's as though if you migrate to Ubuntu 2404 and you go inside of an Incas container where you had Docker nested, if you do a Docker PS, you won't see any running containers. And in fact, if you do a Docker Compose up-D, it'll do a pull just as though uh, you never initially pulled the contents or ever started the container on the device because it just seems like the whole ZFS storage area has been cleared out. So Docker itself is running just fine on the nested container. If you do a Docker PS, you can see that Docker is running. It's just that any of those apps that you had running inside of there um, are no longer there. It's like I said again, it's like you never did a Docker Compose up-D. So, I mean, really Stefan points to the fact that uh, it's a canonical Ubuntu problem. I don't really think it's an Ubuntu problem per se. To me, it's a lack of planning on behalf of the Docker folks. When Ubuntu 24.04 was released, 
the Docker folks should have released a new version of Docker, which would have migrated the VFS storage um, information for Docker correctly and not trashed it. And so I can't point to this being a LexD problem and Ubuntu problem. Um, I think it's really just squarely falls on the shoulders of the Docker folks. So um, the worst problem I had, and this is really the end of it, it's why I'd been offline um, pretty much for 24 hours straight. Uh, I had a 28 hour hack session as I was trying to fix this issue. And um, <clears throat> NPM, Nginx Proxy Manager, absolutely hated the 2404 host. I mean, I didn't get any errors, it's just that it would go offline or it would lock up. And then with all of its complexities, all the other Docker containers, if I did a Docker uh, compose up dash D, yeah, they'd repull their containers and they would start. Probably the only other exception to that rule would maybe be Rocket Chat, which I had to do some additional things to. But I made a couple of videos on that and Rocket Chat is one of those more complex apps. But I wasn't expecting this out of NPM. So I went back and I, you know, I had like 10 backups of my uh, Nginx proxy manager. And so um, after this problem happened, I went ahead and restored one of my old uh, Incus container backups, you know, that you get with an export command. So if you did an Incus export or if you went into uh, Lex console and you did a backup, same, same difference. And if you turn around and import them and they have nested Docker in them, the Docker images are gone in exactly the same way. They vanish. So uh, none of your backups will work after you go to Ubuntu 24.04 if you have nested Docker containers and those Docker apps break. Again, um, Docker's fragile. What can I say? So the problem with NPM is that if you have your persistent volume folders intact, which the backup of course does, and you actually have Docker running, but you don't actually have any um, actual containers in those VFS folders for NPM that are waiting to be started, NPM basically trashes its persistent volume folders and acts as though you have a new installation of NPM and so that was what the problem was with the backups. You just couldn't use a backup for that reason. And like I said, it took me 28 hours to actually determine what had happened through uh, restores and so on and rebuilding. Now, what was even worse than that was that you would feel like as though you should have been able to just rebuild NPM from scratch. And I did that 17 times. And every single time I did it, um, I've got 43 containers in my, uh, or 43, I shouldn't say containers. I have 43 reverse proxy entries in Nginx Proxy Manager. And every single time I would go out and try to recreate it. By the time I got up to like container 24, uh, it, it would just lock up it would die or it would restart and I couldn't even explain what was going on. Ultimately, I went ahead and created my Nginx proxy manager as an Incus virtual machine and that was successful. But for right now, because of this Docker issue and until Docker fixes Docker to try to be able to handle the new changes for ZFS, and Docker probably doesn't know about that, but since Docker relies on um, uh, or interfaces with CFS in this particular case, that's a huge issue. So, I mean, the Ubuntu people would probably point their fingers at the Incus or LexD folks. The Incus or LexD folks would point their fingers at the Docker folks. The Docker folks would probably point their fingers at ZFS. And it's kind of round robin. Anyway, for right now, I would say, hey, definitely stick with Ubuntu 2204. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the rest of the video just so you can kind of see my process. Here we are over on my terminal. And the first thing that I want to do is SSH over to VMS Rain, 
which is my larger of my two application Incus servers. So I've just logged into it and you'll notice that it's running Ubuntu 2404.4 LTS, which is the latest version of Ubuntu 2204. And down here, you'll notice that it says that it has 11 updates that can be applied immediately. And before we do an operating system update, we want to go ahead and upgrade uh, and take all the updates. So the first thing I'm going to do is a sudo apt update and let it update all of the repositories. And after that, I want to do a sudo apt upgrade to take all of those upgrades before I begin uh, the upgrade to the operating system. So here it says that 13 packages can be upgraded. So I'm going to do a sudo apt upgrade dash y and that way it will go off and perform those upgrades. As a result of those upgrades, several updates have been made and so therefore it wants to restart several services. I'll go ahead and tab down to the OK and hit enter and it will restart all of the services that require restarting. I don't know if you noticed earlier when I first logged in, but I believe that it had a message on the system that said that the operating system needed to be restarted due to some earlier updates. And normally an operating system upgrade cannot be performed when there is a pending reboot requirement. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here and come back in and see whether that is true. And it says zero updates are can be applied immediately, but it does say that a system restart is required and therefore I'll do a sudo reboot now and we'll come back after the system reboots. After just a couple of minutes, here we are logged back in and rebooted and it looks like all of the updates are currently taken. So one of the first things I'm going to do is an Incas list just to point out to you how many containers we have on this particular machine. And we've got a couple of VMs. We have our Windows 11 virtual machine. We've got um, a uh, Home Assistant virtual machine. And I have a desktop virtual machine. And the rest are containers. So I think overall we probably have about 33 containers running. And let's go over and take a look at them from the Lex console point of view to point out a couple of other things. Here we are over on Lex Console, and if you're not familiar with Lex Console, go over and watch my video entitled Lex Console Web Interface for Incas. And Lex Console is actually a web interface for both Incas servers and LexD servers. And I encourage you to support Matthew Penning at Penning Labs, who's done a really terrific job on this product. And even since my video on the upgrade to version 0.5.1 of Lex Console, we are now already at version 0.5.3. So let's head over to the VMS Rain server here in Lex Console. And when we get over there, the first thing you'll notice is that we're running Incas version 6.2. And there has been an Incas update in the last couple of days. And then secondly, I want you to notice that the driver versions are for LexC version 6.0.0 and for QEMU version 9.0.0. So LexC or Linux containers is the underlying technology for both Incas and for LexD. And QEMU is the underlying technology for LexD virtual machines and Incas virtual machines. If you go into Lex console and you do not see a QEMU version listed like you do here, it means that your virtualization has a problem. And that's one of the things that we're going to address in this video. Just in the way of checking a few things out, 
we are going to go off and do a sudo apt install on cpu-checker. And cpu-checker is a utility that I already have installed here, but it's a utility that allows you to examine your virtualization settings. Once you've installed CPU Checker, you can do a KVM-OK. And in my particular case, it says that slash dev slash KVM exists and KVM acceleration can be used. And that means that we have support for QEMU and therefore KVM kernel virtual machine. And it means that we're going to be able to do uh, hardware virtualization on this particular machine. Now, also, when we installed Incus, you'll recall that we also loaded QEMU-system, and that was part of the installation process in Incus containers step-by-step. -step. Now that we've performed all of the operating system updates, and in my case, a reboot because that was indicated, and we tested to make sure that hardware virtualization was turned on, we're ready to begin the upgrade. And so the command we wanna use, if you watch my last video, is sudo do-release-upgrade, and it will check for a new Ubuntu release. And it says here that there is no development version of an LTS available, and so there are no upgrades to be taken. And the reason for that is because Ubuntu machines by default are only set to do upgrades to the LTS versions. And as I'd mentioned in the last video, you can't do an upgrade from Ubuntu 2204 directly to 2404 right now. And that won't be an option until Ubuntu version 2404.1 is released probably in the August time frame. In order to take our upgrade instead to Ubuntu 2310 and then to 2404, we have to do a sudo nano on this file they mention here, which is forward slash Etsy, forward slash upgrade or update dash manager, release dash upgrades. And when we get into that file, you'll notice that it says prompt equals LTS. We instead want to say prompt equals normal. I do a control O and enter to write the file out, a control X to exit the nano editor, and then I do a sudo do dash release dash upgrade. This time it should find Ubuntu 2310 and it does. So I'll go ahead and tell it to continue, and then it'll go ahead and fetch the update information. And just like last time, we get a warning that we're performing this update from an SSH session, and just as a precaution, they start a separate SSH daemon at port 1022 should anything occur. But I've not had a problem with that, and I've done upgrades to Ubuntu since version 7.04 actually in 2007, which is when I started with Ubuntu. So I'll go ahead and tell it to continue and I'll go ahead and hit enter. And then it says live patches are not available for 23.10. And if you upgrade live patch will be turned off. So it looks like I'll have to turn live patch back on after the updates. So we go ahead and continue and it will go out and see what updates are required to get to 23.10. This next prompt here is extremely important. It says some third-party entries in your sources list were disabled. You can re-enable them after an upgrade with the software-properties tool or your package manager. And this means that it's going to disable the Zabli repository for Incus. So we'll have to re-enable that after the upgrade. So I go ahead and press enter to continue. After a little while you'll get an upgrade summary and it says here that there are three packages that are going to be removed. 
112 new packages that are going to be installed and 975 packages that are going to be upgraded. And it tells me it has to download a total of 1,040 megabytes, or that sounds like a little bit like a gigabyte. And then this download will take about 53 seconds with my particular connection. So normally server updates don't take nearly as long as upgrades for desktops because servers normally have fewer numbers of packages installed on them by design. And just like in the last video, you're going to get several prompts uh, that ask you about whether or not you want to keep configuration files. And the best thing is to keep your currently installed version. And the reason for that is because we don't want to replace any configurations. We want to retain the configuration that we have on the system currently. Once the update process has completed, you'll get a prompt asking whether or not you want to remove obsolete packages. And it says 132 obsolete packages are going to be removed. I'll go ahead and say yes, and it will go off and remove those obsolete packages from the system. And finally, we get a prompt saying that a reboot is required. We'll go ahead and say yes, it'll disconnect the SSH session and the system will reboot. And here we are logged back into the system and you can see that we're running Ubuntu 23.10. At this point, we'll do another sudo do-release-upgrade to move from 23.10 to 24.04. And it searches for a new Ubuntu release and it finds it. I go ahead and say yes. And we're gonna repeat the process again that we did to go from Ubuntu 2204 to 2310. After the upgrade is proceeded for some period of time, you'll get the remove obsolete packages message. And in this case, it says it's going to release or remove 94 obsolete packages. And finally, we get a message to reboot the system in order to come back up to Ubuntu 2404. And here we are after the reboot and we're running Noble Numbat Ubuntu version 24.04 LTS. I want you to notice that after the reboot, if we go back into Lex Console and we take a look at the driver here, you see a driver for Linux containers version 6.0.0, but what we're not seeing is the QEMU driver and that's because we need to re-enable the Zabli repository and perform a system update. And since those QEMU drivers are not currently running right now, if I go over to instances and virtual machines, you will note that all of my virtual machines are stopped. So let's go fix that. Let's go ahead and do a sudo su to move over to the root account. And once we're on the root account, let's cd over to slash etsy slash apt slash sources dot list dot d. If we do an ls in this folder, you'll see that we have a whole series of repositories and we're gonna wanna go in and take a look at, in particular, the Zabli Incus stable.sources repository and so we're going to go ahead and copy that and do a nano on that particular file. When we go in there, you notice that it says that the distro is set to Jammy, which is Ubuntu 2204. We want to set it to Noble, which is Ubuntu 2404. And we want to come up here to the top and say yes on the enabled section. I do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. At this point, I can go ahead and exit back to my user account and I'll do a sudo Nala update since I have Nala installed and it will check my repositories and update them. You notice it lists the Zabli repository and I'll do a sudo Nala upgrade. 
And if you don't know about Nala, go watch my video on installation sources. It goes over installation processes, APT, flat packs, snaps, and so on. So here we are, and it says that there are three updates for Incus uh, 6.2. Um, to 6.2, which is a newer version of 6.2, and I say go ahead and continue. Now, in heading back into Lex Console, you can see that our current operating system is Ubuntu 24.04. And if we look down at the driver section, we now see that our QEMU drivers are now correctly loaded in addition to our Linux container drivers. And if we head over to the virtual machines section, you'll notice that all three virtual machines are running. And so now we have a successful upgrade to Ubuntu 24.04 on our Incus server. So welcome back from Scott in the Future. And I want to let you know that I finished the upgrade on VMS Rain and I ran into a few problems. And so then I turned around and decided to do the same upgrade on VMS Mist and ran into similar problems, but now I've been able to identify what happened and also a little bit about how to fix it. So what we're looking at here is, here is an article that came from Stefan Graber in April, of, um, April 29th of this year. He says, um, that he discovered an issue and it's really an issue with nesting docker inside of containers and he calls out an issue where he says this happens with ubuntu 2404 container on ubuntu 2404 host with the stock kernel if you followed incas container step by step then you installed your Incus on Ubuntu 2204. And this video is all about updating uh, from the host operating system from Ubuntu 2204 to 2310 and then to 20, 2404. So I first noticed this problem when we went up to version 2310. And so that's what I'm going to kind of show you here. So I'm logged in and uh, here I am on VMS Mist. If I do an Incus list, um, you see that all the containers are up and running and it appears that they all have uh, Docker containers here just the way you would expect. So as an example here with this netboot, let's go ahead and do an Incus shell over to netboot, which is a Docker application. Let's do an SU over to my Scott account on that container, do an LS and CD into Netboot. So all of my containers that have Docker applications on them have been uh, set up to where they have uh, Docker Compose Up-D, which means that when the Incus container reboots, it should start the Docker container. But here's the issue. If we do a Docker PS in any of these things after having upgraded the host operating system of the Incus server, which went again from 2204 to 2310 and now to 2404, if I do a Docker PS, you'll see that there's nothing running, which is really kind of interesting. And that's how this problem seems to manifest itself. How it can manifest itself on a container that is inside of a ZFS storage pool um, really kind of baffles me because it's an isolated environment and uh, everything else works for apps that don't have Docker nested in them. So all we have to do to fix this is to do a Docker pull or a Docker compose pull. And you'll see interestingly enough, it has to pull the entire app as though the app has never been downloaded, yet we know the app's been running in this particular container. So it's gonna go off and it's going to completely pull this app and then we'll be able to do a Docker Compose up-D again 
and it will be running fine. So I do a docker compose up dash D and the app will create itself and it will go ahead and start. So it's almost like the storage that was off in the VS, VFS storage space, that is the layers of the containers, it's almost like they're gone. Can't really explain that in particular, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. So now if I do a Docker PS, of course the app is up and running. And we're gonna see that on other apps as well. Here I am in Lex Console, and another really good example of this is that I'm looking at my instance of Nginx Proxy Manager. And here it looks like we've got all of the Docker networks up and running, so you would assume that the application is running. On the other hand, if I come down here and I do an Inca shell over to NPM, and then I SU over to the Scott folder, and I do an LS and I CD into NPM and then do an LS. There's the data in the Let's Encrypt folders that contain the persistent volume data. And if I do a Docker PS, of course you would assume that Nginx Proxy Manager is running, but no, we're not seeing anything there at all. So I have to do a Docker Compose pull and that will go ahead again and pull all of the layers for Nginx Proxy Manager. And when that's completed, we're gonna be able to do another Docker Compose up dash D. And now that the pull is completed, I can do a Docker Compose up dash D. Now the interesting thing about this is that the containers that do not have nested Docker in them are not having any problems. It's only the containers that have nested Docker applications inside of them have the particular issues. And that's only after doing this upgrade of the host operating system all the way from 2204 to 2404. Although I might point out that I first noticed it when I went from 2204 to 2310. So now I do a Docker PS and Nginx Proxy Manager is up and running. So in summary, hardware virtualization settings must be turned on in your BIOS and tested with the CPU checker. In Ubuntu upgrades, turn off third-party repositories. And so you're going to need to re-enable the Zabli Incus repository after you perform your Ubuntu upgrade. So Ubuntu 2404 has upgraded QEMU components and these are required for Incus virtual machines. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.